Hi everyone, welcome to session 11 of uh, ServiceNow CIS IRM preparation. So in this video, we'll talk about how to configure assessment. So it requires admin or risk admin role, and leverages RAM uh, available in advanced risk assessment, uh, risk assessment methodology. RAM is an object-based assessment, which has factors, weightings, qualitative rating criteria, which are configurable. Event impact context, single inherent assessment, legal, reputational, financial business. Uh, and then we have this LexisNexis, Regulogy and Thomson address integration is available for this uh, RSS feeds. I'm just going to move this above here. Then next, we talk about risk overview, which is like so here we have uh, classic versus advanced. So table names are uh, the scoped application is GRC risk management, GRC advanced risk. So statement hierarchy, risk statement hierarchy, single level in classic risk, whereas multi-level in uh, advanced risk. Risk rollup is not there in classic risk. Risk assessment, uh, risk score rollup is available in advanced risk. And then we have assessments. There is no impact to risk score. Determines risk score and customer controls the formula to calculate the risk score. Then we have only scoped risks can be assessed. Scoped risks and objects can be assessed. Object is a keyword. All assessment questions must be either qualitative or quantitative. Allows mixture of question types. So it can, they all should be either qualitative or quantitative, but in this case, it's, it has a mixture of question types, integrates with other service now applications. It is possible to leverage advanced risk multi-level hierarchy with classes, classic risk assessments. So which means if you have a classic risk assessment, when you install advanced risk, it can still leverage that risk assessment. So configuration steps, review, update properties, dev team, admin team responsibility, Review update categories, risk team provides content, dev team, admin team responsibility to update it. Create import template for risk statements from existing risk register. Risk team provides content, dev team, admin team responsibility to update it. Identify, create, identify templates associated to risk statements. Risk team provides the content, again, dev team, admin team does it. Identify, associate, mitigating control objectives to risk statements. Uh, risk team provides the content. Uh, scope, any types of risk statements. Again, risk team. Set up risk assessment methodologies and related to entity classes, risk team and dev team. Right? So risk analogy, inherent risk, risk without mitigation actions, mitigation actions, actions taken to, to decrease risk, residual risk, risk that remains after mitigation is taken. So primary tables in GRC risk management scope. First is documents, which is GRC profile scope. Then there is content, which is GRC content. And then there is Risk framework, SN risk framework, risk statement, SN risk definition. Risk framework not relevant when using advanced risk. Risk values don't relate to framework. Okay, so when using advanced risk, risk framework is not relevant. Then we have item, uh, which is in GRC profile, and then risk is in uh, GRC risk management. Then you have indicated template, SN GRC indicated template, which is M to M with indicator. Then you have issue which is uh, in advanced risk then you have risk assessment instance then you have risk response task risk statement which is uh, which, which has a relationship to or m time with advanced with, with risk and then uh, which has m time with entity type when you do not migrate to advanced risk then record life cycle for risk will appear in risk record after migrating, the life cycle appears in risk assessment record. So the difference is when you don't migrate to advanced risk, then the record life cycle for risk will appear in risk record. After migration, the life cycle appears in risk assessment record. Classic risk scope methodology, measurement of risk, likelihood impact, scoring methods, qualitative impact and likelihood, quantitative, SLE and ARO, ALE and risk score, ALE is impact to likelihood. If there are no controls or indicators, then calculated ALE is equal to residual ALE. Non-compliant controls and field indicators will come into play. 
where the calculated risk, uh, calculated ALV will be uh, in between the residual and the inherent ALV. Classic risk score calculation residual ALE plus inherent ALE minus residual ALE into calculated risk factor by 100 gives you the actual uh, calculator, the risk score calculation. The risk criteria mat matrix used to map qualitative to quantitative. Navigate risk administration risk criteria. Let's look at that. So you have type, display value, maximum value. So for example, if you see here, so display value, maximum value and currency maximum value. So which means we are saying if this is the value, then your display value is very high. We are basically mapping qualitative to quantitative. This is qualitative, this is quantitative. Then configuration assessment types, assessment types. Let's look at this. So NIS TCSF analysis assessment. Assessment duration is 14 days. State is published, role is SM reader. Scale factor is 10. And we have on which table we are running this and then uh, uh, the conditions, right? Active true and all of that. So. And classic risk assessment with GRC advanced risk features. By default, scoring method is quantitative, can be set to qualitative by system properties. So we have type of risk, inherent residual calculated, tolerance status, tolerance management configuration, admin, max number of levels for risk hierarchy, default is phi, compare risk tolerance, default is equal to sum. Uh, let's look at this. I want to bookmark this and then I want to say properties. I'm looking for tolerance uh, setup, so trying to find the property for that. So SN risk ad advanced risk tolerance into sum. That is the I would look for properties which start with this.
and 21. Yeah, so that's what we're talking about here. Uh, max number of levels is five, and then uh, risk tolerance is some. Yeah, that's that. So this is part of advanced risk. This is part of risk management. Compares risk tolerance based on uh, any of these choices. Then similarly, maximum levels is maximum number of levels for risk hierarchy. Right, that's that. <clears throat> Next, we have content risk team like acceptable and maximum early values. Uh, then you have risk statements and entities, and then you have classic risk assessment. So here can only assess S scope risk. Single assessment method, qualitative or quantitative, depends on a single risk rating scale. Qualitative assessment still de depends on relating the value to currency. Evaluating risk tolerance is currently only available with classic risk assessment in Utah. And, and again, this is like the San Diego notes I have, but in Utah it's also available for advanced risk. So primary tables, uh, GRC advanced risk, we have factor SN risk advanced factor, and there is group factor SN risk advanced group factor, and there is child factor SN risk advanced sub factor. Under that, we have manual factor, base automated, automated scripted, automated query. There are four of them SN risk advanced, uh, basically group, sub, manual, advanced, uh, advanced, automated, sorry, automated scripted, automated. Automated query, right? And then we have three tables: inherent assessment, control assessment, residual assessment. And then there's an M term that maps assessment to uh, factor. <clears throat> then there is personas for workspaces. Uh, so we'll come to that in the next uh, session. Thank you.